If you're building an API and you're using Laravel Sanctum for your authentication method, then using Postman is a little bit trickier than you might imagine to send requests. With normal token-based authentication, it's really simple to make authenticated requests. We just either add this to the query string or we add this inside of a bearer token inside of our authorization tab. But working with Laravel Sanctum is different because we are working with cookie based authentication. So what I'm gonna show you in this snippet is how to basically get this set up within Postman so you can just really quickly get on and start sending requests through to your API as an authenticated user. So I've got a sim uh, sample application set up here ready to go. And I'm just gonna go ahead and log in. You can see over in the body here, I've got my email and password. So I'm gonna send that request through as normal. Um, now notice what we're not doing here is sending a request through to the cross-site request forgery cookie endpoint, which we have to do with Laravel Sanctum. But we are actually doing that in a pre-request script. So I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Now, once we have logged in, if we come over to the example endpoint that we have within Laravel already and send a request here, you can see I'm automatically authenticated. So how does this work? Well, that's exactly what I wanna show you in the snippet. So let's get started and we'll do this all from scratch so you can completely follow along and get this working for yourself. Okay, so I'm currently working on a Nux forum course. So I think I'm gonna use the API for this just to test this out. So I'm going to come over to the API folder here and I'm just going to do a PHP artisan serve. And because of that, I'm running this on 127.0.0.1. So first thing I want to do is take this URL, come straight over to Postman and let's try and send a request through to see what we get. So let's make a post request through to the login endpoint. So let's just go over to login. And of course, over in the headers section, we're going to go ahead and add in the accept header and we're going to set this to application JSON so Laravel knows how to respond properly with an API request. Otherwise, we're just going to get HTML. So over in body, of course, we're going to choose form data and we're going to go ahead and enter our email address and our password and just see what happens when we log in. So let's go over to here and enter our password, which for me is literally just the string password. So what we get here is a cross-site uh, request forgery token mismatch. That's obvious because we are enabling cross-site request forgery protection for our login endpoints. We disable them for our API endpoints, so we don't need them for all of our API endpoints unless you choose to add them. But at least for login and logout and things like that and potentially register, you're going to want to keep them in. So with Laravel Sanctum, I assume you've worked with this already. What we need to do before we start to send requests through to the login endpoint, we need to send a GET request to the Sanctum cross-site request forgery uh, token endpoint, which will give us back a cookie containing the cross-site request forgery token that we need to get through to this endpoint. Now, this can be done in the pre-request script just here, or what you can do is if you want to uh, send this request to grab the cookie back or the token back and set that in a cookie uh, for every single request you make, the best thing to do is to add all of your application endpoints to a collection in Postman. And this is a good idea anyway, because it helps you organize stuff out. So let's go over to click new collection. I'm just gonna type forum in here and let's just save this out for now. And let's go and add this one or save this one at least over into that collection. So let's save that into the forum collection. And now what we can do with this particular collection is set a pre-request uh, request script for every single endpoint in this collection. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. And we're gonna do this based on what is in the Sanctum documentation. But of course we're working with Postman here. So we need to write this code out a little differently. Normally what we would do is we would use Axios to go ahead and make a request to that endpoint. But of course inside of Postman that may not be available. So we're gonna use PM, which is the Postman instance. And we're gonna go ahead and send a request over to that endpoint. This just takes in an object. Uh, you can give the URL in here and you can give the method. And we know that the method is just get for this. And let's paste in the URL that we had from earlier. And let's go ahead and make a request to Sanctum cross-site request forgery cookie. And what that will automatically do is give back the cookies that our client needs to set. Now, of course, in a browser that will be set uh, because it is stateful and you'll have the cookies saved in your browser ready to go. Postman does do this, uh, but we need to do a little bit more work to kind of get around this. So as the second argument here, we get a function. 
And what this will give back is an error if there is one. It will give back the response if we do need to grab the response, which we don't. And what we can also do is destructure things that we get back from this request like cookies. So we're gonna take the cookies that we get back from the request to this endpoint, and we're gonna set them inside of a Postman environment variable that we can then use to add to our headers. So the first thing I'm gonna do, you can do pretty much anything in here. We're only just using this to request to our API, so it doesn't really matter about what we write. We're gonna say, well, if we don't see an error, I'm gonna go ahead and access the Postman environment, and I'm gonna go ahead and set an environment variable that we can then use. So I'm just gonna call this cross-site request forgery cookie. And I'm gonna set the value of that to using them to structure cookies. That gives us back an object that we can use to grab uh, values from. And the cookie that's actually sent back from Laravel is called uh, cross-site request forgery token. So if we send this request across now and we open up our environment variables, we do actually have that set. Now at the moment it shows null. I've got a feeling that is just because I have my session domain set to localhost. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that over there. And let's also switch this over in our pre-request script as well. So we just, of course, we need to make sure that our cores and everything matches up with the correct domain. So let's send this across again and let's open this up and sure enough, there we go. There is our cross-site request forgery token in there ready to be sent across. Now it still doesn't work. The pre-request script obviously runs before we send this request. That gives the, us the ability now to actually send a manual header across. Now the header that Laravel accepts when it is uh, determining whether a cross-site request forgery token is valid is X x site request forgery and i believe it's token let's just give it a try now inside of the value what we can do is we can take this uh, variable name here and we can actually pop that inside of here so let's do that inside of double uh, brackets and you can see you've got the current value of it there and let's send this across and see what happens so you can see now this has actually worked the request here is working and I actually believe I am logged in. So you can actually see the HTML that's being returned to us. And that's fine because uh, to make a request to this endpoint is just the normal web route. So you would expect to get back some HTML. So now that we are technically authenticated, if we head over to the cookie section in Postman, you can see that we've got the Laravel session cookie uh, being set, which means that if we duplicate this tab over and we go ahead and rename this to slash auth or slash API slash uh, user I believe it is and change this over as well and we send a get request to this this should work so let's get rid of the cross-site request forgery token header here because we don't actually need that and of course let's get rid of the body as well because we don't need to send a body with this and we should be good so let's send this request across but we still get unauthenticated now to demo out why this isn't working what I'm going to do is just open up my um, kernel so we can check the ensure front end requests are stateful middleware. So let's open that up and let's take a look at what happens when this is run. So you can see here we get, first of all, configure secure cookie sessions. Let's come down to that and see if that gives us anything. Probably not, so let's ignore that for now. And then inside of here, we've got a new pipeline and we see in here that this goes ahead and pipes this through static from front end. So we should have a method in here called from front end. Now what this is going to do is it's gonna check the referrer. You can see that we get request headers get referrer. So that's the first one. And then otherwise we go ahead and uh, replace that with HTTP just in case. So what's actually missing here is a referrer. So if we come over to here and over to our headers and set the referrer header to localhost 8000 and send that request, sure enough, that works. So the missing piece of this is the correct referrer. Now, what you're gonna have to do is for every request you make, have this referrer in here. You could set this up with a pre-request script to add this to your headers automatically, but to be honest, when you're creating a new endpoint in Postman, it's not too much trouble to add this in. Now, if you change domains, that's gonna be a bit of a problem. So I'm gonna actually cut this out of here. I'm gonna come over to my environment and I'm gonna add in a just endpoint or Let's call this host just to keep things really simple and set that to localhost 8000. And then what we can do is we can replace this out in here with the host. And if we send that across, sure enough, 
this works as we would expect. Okay, let's take a quick look at logging out because that's gonna be a little bit different. So let's go ahead and create out a new request here and send a post request through to log out. Now let's just send that as it is. And of course we'd expect to get back an error. We've got a page expired. If we had our um, accept in here in the headers, not the params, what we should see is some JSON returns. So let's say application JSON on here. And we get a cross-site request forgery token mismatch. Now that's just because like the login page, the logout page is a web route. So we would expect to need a cross-site request forgery token. So what we're gonna to need to do is add that as a header in here as well. But for the rest of your API endpoints, you won't need to send um, a cross-site request forgery token across. Now I've just successfully sent a request to that. Let's just save that out in our collection first of all. So let's make sure we save that into our collection so we get the benefit of that pre-request script. And let's go over to the API user endpoint and send a request to that. And sure enough, we get unauthenticated. So because we've logged out now, that uh, initial value of, for that cookie is no longer available. If I log it back in again, sure enough, it works. So once you get the setup like this, as long as you have the referrer room for all of the API endpoints you want to send a request to, that's pretty much all you need. You just need the referrer in there once you've logged in and everything will work as you would expect. So there we go. My explanation was a little bit long-winded, but I wanted to make sure this was perfectly clear, exactly what we were doing. Step one, create a collection and add that pre-request script just inside of here. Step two is to hit the login endpoint with the cross-site request forgery token in there. For any subsequent requests in step three, you'll need to send the referrer header across, which we've saved out in a uh, environment variable just over here. And then of course, for any other web routes, you're also gonna need that cross-site request forgery token. But lastly, if you're just sending normal API requests, you'll just need the referrer because the cookies within Postman will be automatically sent through to the requests for you.